So for this video, I want to kind of explore the idea of what it means to have a, a normal curve and also the idea of a standard normal curve or standardized scores. Um, what I want to do is look at two different distributions, kind of compare them, see their similarities, see their differences, and then look at them how they would change as we standardize them. Uh, so part of this is looking at the kind of um, generation of data and then part of it is also looking at how we can standardize scores and make two relatively different looking distributions become really the same distributions due to their similarities. So uh, as a way to illustrate this I created two different histograms from data that I simulated using uh, Excel. Uh, maybe I'll post a follow-up video showing that process. The idea is that for this first game let's say I'm going to roll two dice and in that process of rolling these two dice, I'm going to count uh, the number of pips on the face value. So in other words, I will take the sum of the, the dice roll. So if I roll two dice and it comes up as a two on one of them and a six on the other one, then I'm going to record eight. All right. So if I'm going to do that 500 times, I can produce this distribution, this histogram. Right. And keep in mind that a distribution is the recording the the values that a variable could take on as well as the frequency at which it takes on so in my simulated experiment this uh, dice roll took on the value seven just a little bit more than fifteen percent of the time so maybe let's call that seventeen percent of the time and sequentially it took on the value eight uh, maybe let's say about twelve percent of the time uh, the value nine about ten percent of the time on and so forth. And so you see that this, this distribution is relatively symmetric, though not perfectly symmetric. And it's centered on about seven. And it's fairly spread out, meaning it, you know, it covers a wide, a wide range of values. Now this other game that we're going to play, we're going to flip four fair coins and we're going to record the number of tails. So, you know, if you flip one coin, it's either heads or tails. So when I flip four of them, I could have at, at least, you know, I could have at most Four coins, but at least zero coin, uh, zero tails. So I could have zero tails, one tails, two tails, on and so forth. So when we look at this distribution that uh, we've generated here, again, 500 being the key uh, number of tries that I did this, we see that it's centered on two and almost maybe 38, 39, well, 38% of the time uh, the value two came up. In other words, 38% of the time two tails were recorded. Now, this distribution is fairly close together, not very spread out. And if we compare them side by side, we see that, again, the blue is the, the dice roll and the black is the coin flip. We see that the dice roll is a lot more spread out than the coin flip. When we look at it and compare these, we do see that both of these are relatively symmetric but they're centered on different values and they have different widths. So this blue distribution being the uh, dice roll is centered on just about seven and is fairly spread out. We'll see that it actually has a uh, standard deviation of I think it's like 2.4 maybe 2.39 something like that and then this this coin flip is centered on two and is fairly close together it actually has a standard deviation of one. So again, a standard deviation is telling you how far on average each observation is from the mean. And so on average, the observations are for the blue distribution are about, let's say, 2.4 standard deviation, uh, 2.4 units away. So on average, we're you know anywhere about nine to about five. That's where most of our, our dis, uh, most of our observations will be in between, just a little under four and a little above five, uh, nine. Okay. One of the things that we're recognizing is that since these both have a kind of symmetric shape to them, uh, symmetry again is defined, you could look at it as saying that the mean is equal to the median. Okay, So they're not that skewed. Because of that, we can actually approximate them with a uh, continuous curve. So I'm going to use this continuous line to represent that histogram. And I'm able to do that because I've taken enough tries. I've had 500 tries that went into creating this histogram. So I have enough data to say that this histogram is relatively close to the population distribution. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this curve here to represent that population. And so my sample is fairly close to the population. So I'm going to go ahead and just use the population data, uh, population information. What we have when we look at this 
bell curve is what it's called. It's, it's, it's called a normal curve, and it's governed by two things. One of the things it's governed by is that center, so the mean, and the other thing it's governed by is the, the width, so the, the standard deviation or the variance. Okay, so those two things, those two parameters govern the shape and the overall look of a normal curve. So we can use a normal curve also to represent the histogram for the coin flip. Okay, and again, it has a bell-shaped curve, but it's different than the other one, right? So if we look at these bell-shaped curves side by side, we see that, um, again, it's centered on 7, uh, standard deviation 2.42, and then the, the coin toss is uh, centered on 2, and the standard deviation is only 1. So I put in these dashed lines to express kind of the interval, the range of values um, that we're seeing plus or minus one standard deviation from the mean. So uh, when we look at mean centered at seven, we're saying, okay, go above the mean by 2.42 units. It's about 9.42. And go below it by 2.42, so like 4.6 down here. And what it's saying is that the area underneath this curve is the frequency at which we would observe those values. So in the dice roll, we would observe the, the frequency of eight the, the value 8, we would observe it about 15% of the time. And likewise, the value for 6, we would observe that about 15% of the time. Okay, so it's not perfect, but it's pretty close to what we saw, right? It was pretty close to the values that we actually saw, okay? When we compare these, one of the things that we notice between these bell curves is that, well, yeah, they're both symmetric, they're both bell curves, but they're different centers and different standard deviations and different widths. But that's okay because if you consider the frequency as a, as a relative thing, we can actually say that, well, while there's more happening on 2 than there is on 7, the area underneath the curve between the standard deviation bars that I put in here, it's actually the the same or about the same and so what I did is I put in these lines and we're going to count these boxes and so uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 whole boxes underneath this curve and if I look at this box and, and dump in maybe this part here and this part here I get another box so uh, 10, 11, 12 boxes and then each one of these boxes here is about half so I'm going to have 12 uh, so that was 11, 12, 13, almost 14, just shy of 14 boxes. When I look at that same kind of count over here, I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And again, if I look at this as the amount needed to fill in this hole, then I have 11, 12, almost 13, almost 14 then. So I actually have the same amount of area underneath the curve between the same you know, kind of markers, plus or minus one standard deviation. So on a normal curve, any normal curve, it's going to have that trait. So because of that, that strong similarity, so regardless of the center and regardless of the standard deviation, it's going to have about the same area underneath the same uh, interval in terms of the standard deviation. That's why we standardize our scores. That's why we take our every score, subtract the mean, and then divide by the standard deviation. And what that standardizing does is it makes them all, all bell curves, all normal curves, look the same. We standardize the form, and then we can use a common chart to calculate frequencies underneath the curve. So let's take a closer look at uh, our standard scores, standardizing of scores. Um, we'll take a look at the, the dice roll. So when we looked at simulating the data, we can generate the 500 rounds of rolling two dice. And here, is those, here are those scores here. Um, if we look at their distribution uh, here, we're saying that the frequency is about 26%, 42%, 92%, 2.6%, 4.6%, 5.6%. on and so forth. Um, from the data I generated. Now we could look at kind of the idealized form of it here and say, okay, well, this is what I should be seeing. Okay, and that's what you see next to it. This is what we should be seeing. And so we're pretty close in our simulation. We're pretty close to the values that we should be seeing. So if we look at the histogram for that, this is the one that we saw in the other video, we see that, you know, it's pretty squatty 
centered on about 7, although it's not perfectly 7 because it's actually a little bit more and the standard deviation is about 2.39. So the process of standardizing the scores is to take a look at the, the value 7. And if we roll the 7, we're going to say how far away is that from the mean in terms of the standard deviation. So the value 7 is pretty close to the mean. But in terms of standard deviations, it's actually, uh, here's the, the standardized scores, it's actually 0 0.012 points less than the mean, okay, in terms of the standard deviation. So when we calculate this, these standard scores, we take our value 7, we subtract the mean 7.082, and then we're going to divide that by the standard deviation. And what that does is it records the number of standard deviations above or below the mean we are. So all of these values here are the z-scores computed from the, the raw data. So if we look at the, the new frequency, okay, all of these, we see that the graph, the histogram, is actually much different. So here's the first histogram. So I rolled 500 dice and recorded the sum of the pips. When I standardize the scores, we're going to see that the, the, the histogram shifts back and centers itself on zero and actually becomes much closer together. So the, the squattiness goes away. Squattiness goes away. We pull in the standard deviation to the value of 1. So here it's at 2.42, and here it's at 1. Okay, so we, in that process of making it squatty, we actually draw it up and make it a little bit taller on that center. Okay, and again, it's roughly symmetric. It's not perfect, but it's roughly symmetric. 